I'm gonna talk about whether you're entitled to money if someone's negligence caused your emotional distress. I'm gonna talk about how much you may be entitled to and the different situations when you may be entitled to money. Stay tuned and watch the entire video so you can learn all these important pieces of information and see real case examples. Jay-Z helps a Florida injury law firm. I'm personal injury attorney, Justin Ziegler. In most cases, it is not easy to get money for emotional distress. And first of all, emotional distress essentially means anxiety, fear, depression, things of that nature. And insurance companies just don't pay that much money for it in general. There's exceptions to everything. The, one of the reasons why insurance companies don't pay huge amount of money for most cases that have emotional distress, where the person who's injured has emotional distress, is because juries don't typically award huge amounts of money for emotional distress. Again, I'm talking about most cases, your average simple car accident, slip and fall. Yes, there's exceptions where people are horrifically injured and have horrible emotional distress, but I'm just talking about most cases. Everything I'm gonna be talking about assumes that someone else's carelessness caused your injury. It could either be a person who caused your injury or a business. You need, in Florida, for example, a physical impact in order to get money for emotional distress. What's an example of a physical impact? A car accident where your body is jolted, a slip and fall, for example, where your knee strikes the floor, something of that nature. The insurance adjuster, if you speak with them or send them something in writing claiming that you have anxiety, depression, emotional distress, which is also known as mental anguish, if you have any of those symptoms and you're telling the insurance adjuster that you have them or that you want money for them, and the insurance adjuster, one of the first things they're gonna ask you is, have you seen a doctor? And by the doctor, they mean mental health professional. It could even be a primary doctor who is a medical doctor. It could be a psychiatrist, psychologist, licensed mental health counselor, licensed clinical social worker, licensed family and marriage therapist. But the insurance adjusters, in most cases, not all, is gonna to wanna to see medical records and then your out-of-pocket medical bills and total bill charges for these services. They're gonna to wanna to see if you were prescribed anti-anxiety medication, antidepressants, and things of that nature. But just because you weren't prescribed anti-anxiety medicine, such as Pax or Prozac or something of that nature, or anti-depression medicine, you still may have a good case for money for emotional distress. If you have emotional distress and you suffer from anxiety or depression before an accident, if you can prove that someone's carelessness caused your anxiety or depression, emotional distress to worsen from the accident, you're entitled to get compensation for that. And when I've been talking about compensation throughout the video, there needs to be a source of money to pay your claim. Generally, it comes in the form of insurance if you're in a car accident or truck accident. If you're hurt at a business, it generally comes in the form of their insurance or if they're self-insured like many large businesses. Now, if your emotional distress, if you had it before the accident and now you're claiming that it was worsened, understand that that is all things equal. It's a tougher case than if you were, if did not have any emotional distress before the accident because a jury, ultimately, would need to apportion and find out how much of your emotional distress is from the acts, the current accident and how much was from before the accident. If they can't apportion uh, what amount is caused by the accident versus what amount you had before the accident, then you're entitled to recover for all of it, for example, in Florida. Also understand, the longer you wait to get medical treatment or the longer you wait to complain about your emotional distress, all things equal, the less money you are gonna get for that. Sometimes if your complaints of emotional distress occur too long after an accident, expect the insurance company to offer zero dollars for your emotional distress and argue that it wasn't related to the accident. Now ultimately you could take the case to trial and a jury could award money for that still, but you wanna do everything you can, so long as you're telling the truth, to set your case up for the highest settlement possible, and in the event that your case doesn't settle, you'll be ready for trial. Now, you can have a small impact, for example, in a car accident, and you may still be entitled to money for emotional distress, but understand that the smaller the impact, the tougher it is to link up your emotional distress to a car accident. Unfortunately, if you weren't seriously injured in an accident, the fact that you could have died does not mean much in terms of compensation. Your emotional distress does not have to occur at the time of the accident. It can occur, for example, a month later, so long as, again, there was a physical impact at the time of the accident.
where things get even tougher in Florida car accidents, and most Florida car accidents, but not all, is you need a permanent injury in order to get money for emotional distress from a car accident. That just means a doctor, a medical doctor, has to say that the emotional distress you have is permanent. Again, if you're claiming emotional distress from an accident. If a doctor does not say your emotional distress is permanent from an accident, you get zero. Now, the reality is if you're in a horrific car accident, and for example, you see someone, uh, one of the other drivers involved on the floor, on the ground, and he's bleeding, and you have anxiety or depression as a result of that, and you're dealing with a very low insurance policy, like a $10,000 insurance policy, and you also have some other physical injuries, there's a chance the insurance company may not require uh, looking at uh, medical records that state your emotional distress. Also note, just because someone flees the accident and leaves the accident scene, that doesn't entitle you to money for emotional distress in Florida. Another thing I get complaints about sometimes from my clients is they say, I was in a car accident. This has been a very stressful process. Um, just my anxiety is huge. Just because you're in a car accident, uh, even if you're injured, and uh, the process is stressful, having to get a new car, et cetera, that doesn't automatically entitle you for money for emotional distress. Now, what I just discussed about having a permanent injury applies to most car accidents, but not all. For example, uh, if you're on a motorcycle, you do not need a permanent injury to be able to get money for emotional distress. If you're hit by a taxi, in most cases, you don't need to have a permanent injury to receive money for emotional distress. If you're injured in a non-motor vehicle accident, such as a slip and fall, trip and fall, or hurt on a business property, you generally do not need a permanent injury to get money for emotional distress. But all things equal, having a permanent injury, if a doctor says your emotional distress is permanent, it's easier to get compensation than if a doctor says that you have emotional distress or anxiety, but that it's going to resolve. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please watch our other video. We have many other videos. Please like this video. I'm attorney Justin Ziegler with my office in Miami. Have a beautiful day.